OK, so now we're going to be graphing some equations that are in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx. So now um, we can go ahead and label. We can say that a is equal to negative 2 and b equals 4. Now, a lot of times we like to go and factor numbers out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph this using our same method that we did before um, by creating a table of values and then finding it. And then we'll kind of learn some different ways as far as factoring out and graphing it, where we can kind of see you know, what the tr transformations are going to be and so forth. However, if I just wanted to graph this by using a table of values, I'm going to use the exact same process I would have done before when I had an equation in the form of y equals ax squared and y equals ax squared plus c. Now, in those equations, we always had an axis symmetry at 0. And now, our axis symmetry is not always going to be at 0. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to first find our axis of symmetry. So there is actually a formula for finding the axis of symmetry. So we remember the axis of symmetry was um, a vertical line. So we're going to say x equals. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take b, or sorry, the opposite of b divided by 2a. So to find our axis of symmetry, and we need to figure it out anyways. We just don't need to look at the graph. We need to take the opposite of b divided by 2a. So in this case, our opposite of b would be negative 4 divided by 2 times negative 2. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is now going to equal 1. So my axis symmetry is now x equals 1. Now remember, when we created our table of values, it was very important for us to be able to pick points that were to the left and to the right of our axis of symmetry. Now usually, that number was always 0. But now our axis symmetry is 1. So we need to choose two points to the left and to the right of our axis symmetry. And I'm going to give you a little hint here. Don't choose crazy values. All you need to do is pick two points to the left and two points to the right. You can obviously pick more, but I want to keep it kind of simple here. So if I was going to pick two points, I'm just going to make this kind of quick. I'm just going to say, all right, well, why don't we just pick to the left? Why don't we pick 0 and kind of run out of room here. Let's just pick 0, negative 1. Eh, we've got some time. Why don't we do negative 2 since I made extra space? And then to the right, let's just do positive 2 and 3. So to graph this and to be able to find the vertex and everything else, what we're going to do is we're going to create our x and y axis on our coordinate grid, x axis and y axis. And now we need to find our values. Well, just like we've done before, we're going to plug in our x coordinates to now find our y coordinates. So I have y equals negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2. So in this equation, notice how I have now two slots for me to plug in my uh, x. So I need to make sure I plug in my x coordinate into both of those. Then over here, I have y equals negative 2 times, I'm sorry, yeah, negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1. Here I have y equals negative 2 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0. Here I have y equals negative 2 uh, times 1 squared plus 4 times 1. And here I have y equals, oh, I created a lot of space, didn't I? Oh, 1 was equal. OK, 1 equals negative 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2. And the last one I have y equals negative 2 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do an extra plot here. So negative 2 squared is positive 2 times negative 2 is, I'm sorry, that's negative 2 squared is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And that's going to be minus or plus a negative 8, right? Because negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So negative 8 plus negative 8 is negative 16. Over here, I have negative 1 squared, which is 1 times negative 2 plus 4 times negative 1, which is minus 4. So that's going to give me a negative 6. Um, over here, 0 squared is 0 times negative 2 is going to be 0 plus 0 times 4 is 0. So I'm going to have a point 0, 0. Um, then I have 1. <clears throat> 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 4. So I have negative 2 plus 4, which is positive 2. Over here, I have 2. Uh, so 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. And then I have 
two, 3 squared, which is 9, times 2, which, which is negative 18. Is this one right? That's positive 4, negative 8, minus negative 2, negative 16. So then this one would be uh, 9 times 2, which is negative 18, plus 12. Oh, yeah. That's right. I was looking at something else, which is going to be negative 6. Now, remember, we said our axis of symmetry was at 1. So that means to our points to the left and to the right should be exactly the same, which they are. You can see we have that imagery. So when graphing a quadratic with a new axis of symmetry, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the axis of symmetry, which we said x equals 1. So I'm going to go over to 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph my vertical dotted line. That's going to be my axis of symmetry. That's going to be the point that's going to separate my parabola into two equal part parts. Then I'm going to plot this point 1, 2. 1, positive 2. All right, now, the evaluation of the point at the axis of symmetry is going to be very important, and that's going to end up being our vertex. So our vertex is at 1, 2. And this is very, very important for you to understand and kind of see by this pattern that your vertex has to go through your axis of symmetry. So once I know my axis of symmetry, I just find that point by plugging in the, my um, x coordinate to my equation, I'm able to get now my coordinate point for my vertex. Now let's plot the rest of these. So at 0, I have 0. At 2, I have 0. At negative 1, I have negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And at 3, I have negative 6. So it's 1, 2, 3, I have negative 6. Now, I could also go down, and you could see, let's just kind of graph this parabola here, just as it is. You can see it's going to take our shape. Since our a is negative, we can see that the graph is now going downwards. And we can also see this b, what that has now done is that, that has helped shift our graph um, left to right. And it's also, we've also had taken a graph that has been shifted in an upward direction. So it's some very, very important things that have happened just by having our b. Now, if I was to graph this next point at negative 2, negative 16, you can see that this graph is going to continue to keep on going further down. So therefore, you can verify that the vertex is at the point 1, 2. That is the maximum point of my parabola. The last thing is let's take a look at our x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses our x-axis. Well, it crosses at 0, 0, and 2, comma 0. And then let's go and look at our y-intercept. And the graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an equation in the form of ax squared plus bx. Thanks.